One of the best ways to increase value for your clients and your production business is to bundle lifestyle products, stills with the video production package. The client gets an all-in-one solution and doesn't need to stress about doing stills separately with someone else. And you make extra margins in your business. The set is built, the lights are set, and the actors are ready. It's a win-win. In this video, I've visited a friendly media production here in town called Still Studios to show you how smoothly a product photographer works together with a videographer capturing stills and video shots side by side. We have Austin Lorenzen and Alex Burton, amazing photographer and cinema camera DP operator. And we'll see how they coexist and cooperate in the commercial shoot environment. What do you think, guys? It's gonna be a good day. You ready for the challenge? Yeah, let's get to it. All right, let's roll. I've been doing product and commercial photography for about five years now. I started out doing uh, mostly in-studio stuff. Hey, buddy. Um, and then after a couple years, transitioned more into lifestyle photography. That's a majority of what I do these days is on set with models, whether they're humans or dogs like this guy right here. Hi, I'm Andrew Pluck. Uh, I'm the writer of this spot. Uh, today, kind of my job is here to oversee some of the creative aspects of the script I've written, uh, make sure that it translates to the shot list that we're working on and the overall story. Shooting stills alongside a commercial video production, the number one thing is to make sure that I'm not delaying the video schedule at all. Whatever we gotta do to get the content that the company needs, I mean, working side by side with the photographer I know would probably frustrate some people, but it, with me, I mean, it's just part of the gig. It doesn't make a difference at all having anybody near me trying to get what they have to get. I'm pretty zoned in on what I'm doing. Commercial shoots typically are pretty dense. We try to pack a lot in a single day, a lot of setups, uh, scene changes, different models, outfit changes, all that stuff. My goal is to basically not impede the schedule any more than it already will be. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for regular videos on mastering the art of commercial filmmaking business. As for my preferred gear on set when I'm shooting photos, I love the a7 IV, Sony's kind of top of the line hybrid camera right now. I guess the A1 is a little bit higher end, but I love this flip out screen. Um, I can get some really great shots alongside uh, video production because I'm able to use their continuous lighting and still use higher f-stops like f2.8 or above. In the event that I do need a little bit more light or if I'm looking for a different look, I use Godox's off-camera flash systems. I love the 8200 for sets like these. It's, uh, it's really small and light. I can throw it on this kind of lightweight stand. A lot of the houses have white walls and ceilings or something close to that. So I'm able to just use a simple reflector and bounce it off the wall um, and get some really solid, uh, beautiful lighting in a matter of seconds. Just dial in the settings and uh, go to town on whatever the setup is. Even with like a three or five minute window in between takes, I'm able to just really quickly drop the light stand in place, get some really solid shots and get out of the way for the video to do their next scene. aspect of getting good photos and videos on set is keeping the lighting in mind. On the photo side, because it's just a still image, you don't have motion to help tell the story, you really have to make sure that the lighting is compelling enough to make a solid final image. When you're shooting both side by side, on the video side, sometimes you can get away with a little bit softer, more even light and have the motion and the, the actions of the scene kind of tell the story. Whereas on the photo side, you would probably want to punch the light up a little bit, take a little bit more time and don't, don't shy away from harder light. A lot of times uh, that can be a little daunting at first, but on the photo side especially, hard light can really help and especially getting the light off axis uh, a little bit behind the subject. Um, a lot of times for me just really elevates a whole scene. It's easy to just get a softbox and blast soft light from the front, um, but don't be afraid to flip it like all the way behind or just experiment getting the, the light off axis a little bit, especially if you're shooting photos and videos alongside. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below saying that you subscribed and we'll try our best to reply to your comment. 
The great thing about modern cameras is you have a lot of latitude in post when it comes to retouching your photos. Primarily what I'm focusing on in camera is getting the exposure in the right ballpark, especially when we're moving really quickly. But honestly, I don't even shy away from uh, some blown out highlights as long as the subject is exposed properly and we're not clipping on the high or the low end and the highlights of the shadows. I know that I have enough information there. My goal is to make compelling compositions. That's a little bit trickier to fix in post, but honestly, even these days with Photoshop's generative fill, and the other tools that we have at our disposal. Even fixing composition, like if you kind of want to shift it over to a third line or expand up or down or crop for vertical, especially if the background is blurred or a little bit uh, less textured, we even have latitude there um, to fix it up in post. When a client asks for both lifestyle video and photos, usually you have two options. Either shoot both yourself or hire a photographer to work alongside you. Sometimes I shoot product photos and video on the same production day, but it only happens on small controlled sets with three or four crew and where there isn't much at stake. But if you're working on a bigger project and want to serve your client well and give them the product that you're proud of, you definitely gonna wanna get more people on board and not shoot everything yourself. Just imagine that while you're taking stills, 15, 20 people are standing and waiting for you and on your dime. So more hands create production that has more value and looks and works much smoother, especially if the client is on a set with you. There's gonna be some unexpected things that come up, especially today, working with pets, uh, dogs and cats. They're gonna do what they wanna do. They say that dog is human's best friend, but is it the best actor? We've had a bunch of pets on set as the models. Um, we have human talent today as well, but the pets are the stars of the show for this one. The pet is, uh, whether it's a dog or a cat, they're only gonna be cooperative and do kind of what you want them to be doing in the scene uh, for a brief moment of time. Even if they're super well trained, they're still gonna kind of do what they want to a certain extent. It's especially important for me to be capturing stills simultaneously with the video because we can't promise that we'll be able to achieve the same look and setup um, in a repeatable manner. It can take like five or ten minutes sometimes to get them to cooperate, so we can't have that be happening multiple times, setting up for video and then uh, getting them set up again uh, for photos as well. Human talent, very easy to direct, very easy. Like Justin, our wonderful talent for that. Yeah, look at, you can't see Justin, but he's right here. Look at Justin. Great on camera, easy to direct. Uh, but dogs, it's not so easy. So you have to do a lot of things like treat coercion, uh, you know, manifesting, manipulating. If you like the joke, hit the comment section. <laughs> working with a dog is a little different than working with a human actor. So the dog, this is my first time working with the dog and I already knew with dogs, you gotta really get their attention, especially like right when you meet them. So I guess it's similar to humans, but the difference was, you know, it was a little different to direct the dog, even though I was just kind of sitting there trying to get him to listen to my commands. Thankfully, all I had to do was get a treat and everything worked out. It was, it was smooth sailing from there. With this setup, it's a, it can be a little challenging with the animals and pulling my own focus while I'm trying to run with a, a heavy camera, um, super low. So it, it's tricky. You gotta go with the flow and, and get what you can get. As we're shooting, I'm staying out of the way, definitely out of frame, but behind uh, to one of the sides of the camera and being mindful of where the light's coming in. Right now we have uh, a bunch of uh, really soft light coming in through the window um, with some hard light spots as well. So just making sure I'm not casting any shadows or affecting the scene in any way by being near the camera. With some of the more dynamic camera movements, we have a Dana Dolly today, just making sure I'm not interfering with the DP as he's panning back and forth or, or moving around in the scene. When I can, I'll be shooting simultaneously while they're doing a take um, or just waiting until uh, right after and just asking for a minute or two with the same uh, with the same setup. As long as we're not in each other's shots and whatnot, I mean, it's, yeah. It's, it's a pretty simple, smooth process. My goal is to stay out of the way but still get all the shots I need, so a lot of times I'm kind of hovering uh, out of the way near the camera in between takes or even simultaneously um, while video's rolling, shooting alongside. As I'm transitioning, changing camera from sticks to, to dolly or vice versa or, or changing cards or whatever, that gives photography time to get in there and, and take their photos. So. We're usually not on top of each other and it's not a big deal. If they are rolling sound, I need to use the silent shooting mode on my camera 
Luckily today we're not rolling sound on set, so I can fire away, um, do burst shooting and, and all that good stuff, and uh, make sure I have lots of stuff to, to work with on the back end. So you might be thinking, I only do photography or I only do videography. How am I gonna be able to do both of these things? Or where can I find somebody to help? That's where community comes in. Start getting to know other professionals in your city who do or know the other side of creative business that you don't. If you're a photographer, go look for filmmakers in your area. Invite them out for a coffee. Visit their studio, hang out. Offer them something that's gonna benefit them. Hey, can I help you and assist on your next commercial shoot? I would love to help you and also learn from you. And then actually follow through on your promise. You can also offer them to be your second shooter or even your lead shooter for one of your own client work and kick it off that way, all the while still learning from them. Work smarter, not harder, and use the resources you have near you. At the same time, make sure to also give value to your community. If you're a videographer that wants to expand your capacity and kind of take on stills as well, it can be tricky at times switching between the two. I think modern camera systems kind of offer a lot in that capacity. If you're looking for a single camera solution, most of the camera manufacturers, Canon, Nikon, or Sony, I use the Sony a7 IV. They all have really solid platforms at the top of their line that are fully capable of kind of doing both at the same time. If you're only doing video right now, this will help you make extra margins and profit on that production day, and you can reinvest those back into your business. I think the most important thing here is that this gives you an opportunity to serve your clients above and beyond. This really helps them get that uniformal branded look and saves time and hassle of finding a lifestyle photographer somewhere else separately. You can tell them that you have a solid team and you know that you're gonna work in sync with one another and it will really set the client at ease. Plus, the consistency across photo and video assets will make them feel really good. I hope this was helpful and inspiring to you and I'll see you on the next one.